Chapter 22, The Blind Lady Bowler. I was still in a bad mood when I got home, and I took it out of my mother. You can forget about Uncle Lester leaving us any money, I said, hitting her where it hurt. Guess who his bridge partner was today? She already knew about it, having talked about mi with Mrs. Mahoney. She's his protege, I said. It's part of her homeschooling, said my mother. That's all. I wouldn't worry too much about it. She'll do something crazy, and that will be the end of that. She seemed normal enough to me, I said. A little nervous, maybe. She knocked over her bidding box. My mother nodded knowingly, then said, You can bet that she was heavily medicated. She's really pathetic, I told Cliff. She pretends to be all interested in bridge. Gee, you're so smart, Trap. Why, didn't I think of that? When really, all she's doing is sucking up to him so he'll leave her a bunch of money in his will. I thought that's what you were doing, said Cliff. We were at the country club pool. Cliff had come down off his lifeguard perch and was sitting on the edge of my lounge chair. I had signed in as Robert Mays, a country club member who, according to Cliff, was vacationing in New Zealand. I hadn't told Cliff about my father losing his job. For some reason, I felt ashamed. Check out the diving board, Cliff said. A girl in a pink bikini stood at the far end of the diving board. She shook her hair back, smiled at us, well, at Cliff, then raised herself up on her toes, took two steps, bounced, and dived into the pool. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Cliff said. You'll like this. There was this blind lady bowler on the news the other day. She'd been in a car accident, but before that, she'd, she'd always been this great bowler. They showed her bowling. Her husband got her all set up, then she took three steps and rolled the ball down the alley. At first, it looked like the ball was headed straight for the gutter, and I thought, you know, well, big deal. What's so great about that? But then, when it was an inch away from being a gutter ball, it suddenly curved back and hit smack in the center of the pins for a perfect strike. Great, I said, without a whole lot of enthusiasm. Everyone was all excited, Cliff said. Not only the people on TV, but at my house watching it. Katie had tears in her eyes. Katie, I asked, trying to keep my voice at an even pitch. Sorry, he said. No, it's fine, I said. Really, she was just leaving, he said, as if that was supposed to remove the sting. My dad had the news on, and we stopped to watch. It's no big deal, I said. I'm glad you and Katie are together. Better she's with you than some jerk. The girl in the pink bikini climbed out of the pool and passed right in front of us, this time not looking at Cliff, content that he was watching her. She's like 14 years old, I pointed out. He blew his whistle and yelled at some kids to quit running. You gotta admit, he said, bowling a perfect strike is more amazing than just memorizing a few cards. Not that there's a contest to see who the most amazing blind person is, but I don't admit that. A bowler does the same thing every time. The same three steps. The same arm motion. It's muscle memory. Every bridge hand is different. I looked it up on the internet. There are 635 billion, 13 million, 559,600 possible bridge hands. And those are just the cards one person holds. There are... 53 trillion possible deals, each one a, a unique puzzle. Trap had to memorize every card in his hand and in the dummy, while at the same time keeping track of every card the opponents played. Hand after hand after hand. Don't get me wrong, I was happy for the blind bowler. I watched her bowl her strike on YouTube. She was inspirational. All I'm saying is, I bet she's better at strikes than spares.